Hi there, trailer owners. Today we're going to be taking a look at Moride rubber equalizers for tandem axle trailers with a 33 inch wheelbase. And this is what our new equalizers look like when they're installed. They are going to be larger in size than your traditional equalizer because we've got rubber dampeners inside and it's just a heavier duty application than what your standard one is. Your standard one's just constructed of metal. This one has very large, beefy bracketry to it with the dampeners inside. You've got your kind of traditional portion of the equalizer down here at the bottom where it attaches to our leaf spring eyelets using the shackles. The shackles don't come included with your equalizer. These are shackles from More Ride though and they're also heavy duty upgraded shackles that come included with wet bolts. I do recommend using this particular shackle and wet bolt kit because it works very well with this equalizer. It's all from More Ride. It slides together and the More Ride equalizer here does come with bronze bushings pre-installed so it's recommended that you use wet bolts with this equalizer so you can maintain lubrication on those bronze bushings. With this system here our rubber dampener there takes a lot of the load from our axles as they're moving up and down and over time this is going to wear out the rubber dampener inside. You are going to get plenty of years of service out of it though so you don't think this is going to be like just you got to replace this rubber um, every time you take your trailer out. If we take a closer look at our rubber dampener here this is kind of the magic that happens is with this dampener because as our suspension moves this dampener is going to absorb a lot of that impact before it transfers from one axle to the other and into our trailer. Also, since this can compress, we're going to get more movement out of our axles than with other equalizers. The dampener, though, does take, since it takes all the brunt of the load here, over time this is going to wear out. Now, More Ride does say that it's normal to see cracks and little weather marks in it. Um, over time, those cracks do occur, but they provided a wear indicator into the equalizer here so you can tell when it's completely wore out. This lip right here is actually the wear tab. Down here on bottom, when this face here on this blue surface, it will eventually get closer and closer to this wear tab as the rubber wears out. And once the wear tab is resting on the equalizer here, our dampener has completely worn out and we're basically back to just a standard equalizer at that point because it's all metal on metal. It's gonna work just like basically a regular equalizer once all this rubber is worn out. At that point, it would be recommended to replace the equalizer so that way you can get your dampening properties back. But it is really cool that the way they've designed it here that as your wear component, which is always going to be your dampeners, as they wear out, it falls into a position where it acts as a standard equalizer. So that's really nice. You don't ever have to worry about it just completely failing on you. It's just going to do its thing until eventually it's wore out and you just got to replace it, but it's still going to function. No fail will ever occur. So here we can see how our More Ride suspension is going to be a major upgrade over our factory equalizer. The factory equalizer here attaches to a leaf spring on each side. You have your front and your rear axle attaching there, and then this is a pivot point in the center. What will happen is when you're driving and this pivots as your rear tire here, or the front tire, whichever one, as it hits a bump, it can move up and then it'll kind of push down on the other axle. And that'll give your axles a lot more movement because as one can move, the suspension will work together with the other to give it more free movement so that way your tires can move around as need be and the suspension can travel rather than just transferring all those impacts and stuff from the road into your trailer. This is going to work similarly but we've got an extra level of dampening in here because with this one whenever our axle wants to move up or down and it goes to push up on this to allow movement to occur there's a large rubber dampener inside and that's going to absorb a lot of that impact. With this one, we have no dampening really whatsoever. It's just straight axle into leaf spring, leaf spring into here, and then into the other one, and then it just transfers up into the trailer. There's really no dampening. The only dampening really there is our leaf spring, which is a solid piece of metal there, does flex, and then our tires. With this, we've got an additional absorption pad in there, and you can see how thick that pad is. I mean, it's a monster. I can't move this thing at all. So you can imagine that how stiff that is in order to support your weight of your uh, suspension as your axles are moving up and down there. 
So that absorbs a lot of those impacts. What that's gonna do for you is it's gonna reduce a lot of the vibration and jarring movements that occur inside your trailer. So with the old ones here, you go over bumps, you might've had some cabinets that were flopping open and stuff. This one here is gonna absorb a lot of those impacts and you're still gonna get some vibration in the trailer. It's not gonna completely mitigate everything, but it's gonna be drastically less than what just your standard equalizer does there. A similar equalizer would be something like Lippert's equalizer. That also has a dampener in the middle, so that way as the axles move, it'll compress that dampener to absorb those impacts. The big difference that I see between this one and the other one though is the way that the Equiflex works. You have your attachments on each side with the dampener in the middle, and as that wears out, it seems like we can get play and things like that there in the middle. And when this one wears out, it just kind of rests up and it becomes just a standard equalizer once all the metals contacted each other. So I feel like this one's a better option as far as just an overall reliable equalizer. I also like the shape of this one a little better. It's more traditional equalizer size. The Equiflex is kind of bulky towards the center. I've never had it had an issue with uh, contacting any components and getting in the way, but this one just seems like it's more compatible and just a more uh, traditional look to it in its design. Another thing that I like about this one over the Equiflex is that this is going to give you up to three inches of suspension travel so you've got more movement and this is our travel slot down here so you can see how we've got a little bit more uh, freedom when our suspension kind of unloads a little bit. Now if you're wanting to do a traditional upgrade where you're just replacing your wet bolts and your equalizers this is probably my favorite setup uh, as far as the different competitors out there. But if you're looking for a premium option, I would recommend Roadmaster's Comfort Ride System with slipper springs. That's gonna be a different style of suspension system. We're not gonna have our axles completely connected to one another through an equalizer with the slipper spring set up. You'll replace your leaf springs, so that way they'll be completely independent from one another. It has also come with a, there's a shock kit available with those, so you can have uh, dampening from shock absorbers as well. As well. And that really just brings you into a suspension system that's much closer to like your truck or your car would ride. It's far above and beyond um, any equalizer setup. And that's gonna be your premium option for you if you're looking to go that route. This equalizer is rated to work with axle capacities up to 8,000 pounds. And for tandem axle trailers with a 33 inch wheelbase with double eye leaf springs. You'll receive two equalizers in your kit so you'll have one for each side. We'll begin our installation by jacking our trailer up to where our axles are off the ground. You can see they rotate here. You can do this by using a jack and just placing jack stands under the four corners of your trailer underneath the frame to hold it up. We'll then remove our wheels. Typical sizes are 19 and 21 millimeter, but yours may vary slightly. Ours is a 21. We're just going to set that aside. Next we're going to need a jack and some jack stands so we can support our axles so when we take our hardware loose here we have control over them so we can lift them up and down to make sure everything's not going to be in a bind and we can get it all in position. Okay. So we just put a jack stand underneath one axle and then the other we're just going to take our jack and we're just going to jack it up until it just barely touches the bottom.
now that we've got that one off, we can remove the other ones. Once you get one loose, they get a lot easier because everything's kind of free now. There's nothing that's really in a bind. So we'll just take those off of there. For these bolts, we'll be knocking these out from the other side. And what I like to do when driving these bolts out, I like to take one of the nuts that we had removed and thread it on there just a few turns. That's going to keep you from mushrooming the end because sometimes if you bash on the end of the bolt there, you'll mushroom it and it becomes so fat that it can't fit through the hole. By placing the nut on it, it prevents it from mushrooming and it also saves the thread. So if you were planning on reusing these for anything, it would uh, protect your bolt there as well. After you break it loose, we can just kind of pull it, work it out until our equalizer comes down. We'll repeat that now for our spring eyes here at the end to drive those bolts out. We can now repeat that for our spring eyelets to get those removed. Now, if you've already got wet bolts installed, you can just go ahead and continue on. But if you're following along with us and you're also going to replace your never fail your self-lubricating plastic bushings here, then we'll need to get those driven out. And I like to get these uh, eyes done on the end of our leaf spring on the outside so that way we can get this in and get that bolt back in real quick so that way the axle's got some kind of support on it. What I like to use to drive out the old bushings, um, a, a drill bit of similar size works really well getting these plastic ones out. But you can also just take your old bolt, this is one of the uh, old ones, and I tried to look for one that had pretty worn out serrated edges as well because when you go to drive your bushing back in, you want to have a bolt where the head goes all the way up to the end of the bushing there. We don't want our serrated edges to kind of dig into it. So now that we've found, got our bolt here, we're just going to kind of go on the side of the lip. And we're just kind of pressing that lip towards the center there. We're going to do that at a few different spots. And then once we kind of get it bent inward, we can then usually get enough bite to drive it out at that point. It's kind of all we're looking for here is just to get enough bite to where our bolt will then just start to drive the whole bushing out the other side. Oftentimes you do kind of got to go at it like at an angle like that to get it to bite. We can just take our bushing, we're going to slide it over our bolt. We're just going to drive it in just like that. If you go to put your new bushing in and the bushing just slides right in there by hand without having to drive it in, your plastic bushings had failed and caused play to occur between the bolt and the leaf spring and it had wallowed it out and it actually had damaged the leaf spring. In that instance, you would want to replace your leaf spring. So now that we've got that one in, I like to get the one bolt back in here on the end of this to keep it from falling down, just kind of taking the bolt on each side, just trying to line it up. The grease fitting can be placed on either side. You could have it here on the outside or on the inside. If possible, I like to put it on the outside so that way it's easier to grease without having to get it under the trailer. But I usually assess it by looking at the size of the tire. If our tire is so large that it's going to cover up this grease fitting, then I'll put the bolt from the other direction and crawl underneath so I can grease it because I don't want to have to take the tires off to grease it. These tires are small enough though on this particular vehicle that we can go in from the outside and still access the fitting to grease it. So we're just gonna slide that on through. It should come out the other side and we can place our nut on it, but I do like to take a socket and just get it started in there. So I'm putting the opening end over the fitting there so we don't damage the fitting. And we're just tapping it just to get it started inside there. We can then use the same size socket and wrench that we used to take them apart to put them back together. It's going to be a 11 16ths and a 13 16ths. And we just want to go until it's drawn in. Looks like it could go just a little bit further. And sometimes once you put a little bit of pressure on it like that, if there's still a little bit of gap, we'll switch back to the socket and hammer and we'll give it a tap again because in a lot of cases when you've got a little bit of that bolt pressure on there you can tap it and it'll drive itself the rest of the way. Looks like we're nice and flush now. So 
So we will then continue on driving out any bushings that are the plastic self-lubricating ones and then plate replacing those with the bronze ones. And then when we get our way to the other end on the other leaf, we're gonna put that bolt in over there and then we'll come back to the middle for our equalizer. Now we've got both of the spring eyes on the ends fully installed and we've got our bushing swapped out here. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is to position our axles for our equalizer. So we're gonna lift up on both the axles and we want to just get that uh, the spring eye towards the center there to be about the same height as our center bolt here. It's, end, it's going to end up being slightly lower than it once we get it into position, but this will give us a little bit of leeway to work with. I went ahead and just placed the jack stand underneath the bolt there so that way it'll hold them up. We'll be moving those around as need be to get everything to line up here. But now that we've got those raised up, we can take our new equalizer here and we can go ahead and get that into position. You can see the bronze bushings are already pre-installed from More Ride when you get this, so you don't have to do anything with these. You just slide your wet bolts in and bolt them down. So we'll just take our equalizer, we're going to slide it up between our hanger. We'll then take our wet bolt here and we're going to slide that through our equalizer and then we'll secure it with a nut on the other side. And this is just like those uh, spring eyes. We're going to give this a little tap there to help seat it and then we're going to run that down. So next we're going to be putting our shackles in place. Now these ones here, this came with our wet bolt kit. So I really highly recommend purchasing this wet bolt kit. It's from More Ride. It's kind of designed to work all with this setup here. It gives you the rest of the pieces to the puzzle really to get this installed because your old equalizers, or your old shackles, I'm sorry, are gonna be of a thinner diameter than these heavy duty ones. And you can see how much heavier duty this one is here. So by upgrading everything along the way, it's just gonna ensure that our suspension is gonna last. Uh, if we put on those thinner shackles that you had that were stock, there's a good chance that they were kind of wallowed out and they're only gonna get worse over time. Since they're so much thinner, they're gonna wear out faster than the rest of your suspension components. And the weakest link's gonna be the part that breaks, so let's take care of that while we're here. So what we're gonna do now is just slide these in, and we are gonna have to kinda manipulate our axle a little bit. I'm gonna be going up first just to get my jack stand out of the way. And then we're gonna bring it down some until it gets pretty closely lined up to where we can slide our shackle in. Let's take a look at it right there. That looks pretty close right there. And we do have some play here because our uh, equalizer is loose, but we want to try to keep it in the roughly level for our suspension there. We'll then place our shackle on the other side. We have another heavy duty one that'll come with your kit there. Oh, right there. These have to line up just perfect because we want the shackle to sit on the shoulder, not the threads of the bolt. So sometimes you got to kind of work it back and forth just a little bit to get it to slide into place. It's a very tight machine tolerance. And then we'll get those nuts on there and then we can go ahead and get these snugged down. Again, everything's going to be using the same size that we have for all the rest of our hardware. So we'll put our other side in now. To do that, we're gonna put our jack stand back into place underneath this axle. We'll let that one come down some. We'll move our jack to the other axle. We'll lift up slightly to remove our other jack, and then we can let this one down until it lines up so we can get that other shackle installed. And sometimes you may need to give a little bit of assistance if you've got it all the way down and it still doesn't line up. And we'll just get our other shackle into place here. And sometimes your suspension does just want to fight you and you can't quite get it perfect. We've got it lined up, but I can't quite just slide it in easily. But you can see with just light taps of the hammer, it's going right in there.
We can then go back and torque all of our bolts to the specifications outlined in our instructions. Next, we can just grease them up. If you need a grease gun, you can get one here at each trailer. We've also got cartridges of grease available here. We're just using a multi-purpose grease. We're using marine grease on this one just due to the customer indicating that he is in kind of a high moisture situation a lot. So that's just gonna help extend the life of the grease that's inside of here. But red wheel bearing grease also works very well. Just regular old chassis grease. And that's what we're looking for there is our grease to pop out on the other side. We know we've got it all the way through and we're just gonna repeat that on all the remaining fittings. We can now go ahead and get our tires reinstalled at this point and then we wanna make sure we tighten and torque our lug nuts to the manufacturer's specification. More often than not, you gotta get it back on the ground before you're able to torque it. Another quick thing I wanted to point out is our equalizer here. When we had installed everything and we had our jack stands under it, the shackles were above the equalizer, kind of angled up at about this point on each side. When you go to take your jack stands out to lower your vehicle back down, in most cases, the axles are going to flip and they're going to pop on you kind of when you go to take those out of there and take all the weight off. When you get this back on the ground, we'll place our jack back underneath the axles and we're going to re-jack those up, but using the weight of the trailer to ensure that they stay in their correct position. So now we're coming down to flip our axles. We've got the other side replaced here. And what we're doing is when we lower the trailer down, I've got a jack underneath the axle there and I lift it up enough just to get this one up. When we come down, we can then kind of lower the jack slowly to keep this one up. And then with this one kind of in a straight position here, it makes it a lot easier to get under there and pop this one up at, at that time. So we'll get a little bit of pressure down and then we can pop the other one up afterwards. So we came down and as we were lowering it down, we kept our jack just barely underneath that axle there and we kind of let a little pressure off. And then we can move our jack to the other axle now. We got that one touching and we're just gonna lift it up until those straighten themselves out. They should both be positioned on top of the equalizer now. The main trick when you're doing this really is just that first setup when you're bringing your trailer down making sure that one of your axles is on top of the other. At that point, getting the other one up, it kind of falls right into position as you're lowering it down and, and lifting your uh, axles up with your jack. And that completes our look at Moride's rubber equalizers for tandem axles with a 33-inch wheelbase.